yeah, Megan has been an inspiration for us. She's a huge, like, superstar for us. So I'm actually a bit nervous. So. Yeah, she's inspired us to use our platform as well. Uh, so, yeah, it will just be really exciting to, to talk with her about all these things. What a run this is! Vanilla Harder to double Chelsea's lead! That is a fabulous goal! That's a good challenge. She got the ball. Thank you for, for doing this. Um, we're really, really happy to have you in this and you're a big inspiration for us. You've been a, you are a role model for us, like with all the things you're doing, it's, it has inspired us to, to use our platform to be who we are. And so, yeah, we're super happy that you, you want to be in this. Of course, for the gays, yes, <laughs> always for the gays. We really want it to be just a conversation between us and you and share experiences that we've been through and yeah we want to take the opportunity like now we have you here we want to learn a little bit about you and learn from you like because like Penilla said you are a true inspiration for us and a role model in a lot of ways like on the pitch but mm, like off the pitch we think you're so cool like you're you know you say you always say the right things you always know what to say how to express it for us it seems like you have so much integrity like you know you know exactly what you stand for you know your values and is this something is this the way you always been or like has to come with age that you <laughs> you found out this or yeah like how did you become this role model i've either learned it because i'm close to it or just because it's affected me and really like having that feeling from a very young age of like, if we don't do anything about it, the sort of wheels of injustice will just keep turning. And so it's, it's unfair. Um, I get upset about it all the time. I'm like, I'd much rather be spending my time on doing a lot of other things, but um, fairness isn't really the question. It's more like, what can you do with your platform? And I think being able to see the world and see our sport change and grow around us in real time is really kind of amazing. And I think what, what sort of keeps us all going, I'm sure you guys feel the same. Like the more you speak out, the more vocal you are, the more you talk about it, you know, even just in the last, you know, five, six years, think about how much our sport has changed and how much really the players have been at the forefront and the impetus of all that change. The 2019 World Cup was like a game changer for us because we had the photo after a game. We, I went up to Penilla and I kissed her like, I not, kissed like, you, I think. Oh, you saying. kissed me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and like, nothing for us, nothing really, no thought went into that. We but didn't think over, about it. Yeah. We didn't think about that someone would take a picture of us kissing. But then the day after, I think I had like 20,000 new followers. This picture of us kissing just went vi viral. Yeah. And that made us realize that we had a platform that we actually, when we say something, we do something, people listen to it, and it can make a little change maybe. People underestimate how much change even just one person can make. And like, you know, we can't change the world by ourselves, but sometimes you just need that spark. And, you know, I think with you two, um, because you're both beautiful and you're not like gay looking, you know, people look at me and they're like, well, of course you get your hair's like this short and it's pink and like, what's going on here? This is wild. Or like Abby Wambach, like Abby Wambach is gay or like I'm gay. You know, there's some players that like, whatever, you can look however you want, but you know what I'm saying? But I think it does break barriers. It does like, you know, that is, that is different for people to see that. And I think not just for people who may not, you know, understand it or whatever, but for players as well. Like, I think there's closeted players still that are like, okay, like, I don't really look like Megan, so I don't know if that's gonna be accepted if I come out. We just feel like that's our goal, is just to make it, to normalize it, to not make it weird, not make it something special. Yeah, it shouldn't be such a big pressure on it. You can just be, love who you love, be who you are, uh, that kind of thing. 
but uh, how do you feel? Because like, for me, like meeting Penilla, I don't think I would have ever done this on my own. I think Penilla has really inspired me to be more open, to be more honest. And how you are obviously you have Sue, your fiance. Has that changed anything for you? A lot of the stories traditionally that you hear about gay people is just how hard it is. And I don't want to take away from people who really struggle because that is a huge part of it. And there's a lot of homophobia and there's still, you know, violence for gay people and trans people. And it's, it still can be very scary, but there's also joy in it as well. And that's something that Sue and I talk, like we're both very comfortable being gay. We're both a little bit older in our lives, obviously. And we're at the point where it's like, we love being gay. We love, we love being together. We love being gay. It's not a thing that we struggle with. It's actually something that we celebrate. And so to show, you know, whether it's younger people or older people too, I mean, honestly, it's everyone to show a different kind of gay story, because so many of the stories traditionally have been rooted in the struggle or your family doesn't accept you or you don't accept yourself or whatever. I think it's important to also show, and I think you're seeing more of that now. I think you guys being out the way that you are shows that, you know, you're just like, this is normal. It wasn't that. Yeah, it wasn't a, a staged or planned thing. You know, you were at the World Cup and, you know, your partner's there supporting you. Like, of course, you're going to kiss them afterwards. Like, it would be weird not to. And so you're showing a very joyous, normal, healthy, happy relationship because so much of the negative rhetoric that we hear is that, you know, you're not going to be happy or it's unnatural or, uh, you know, whatever it may be. But I think, you know, being able to provide those joyous stories and those happy stories uh, as well, I think is really important to sort of breaking down the stereotypes and getting a different narrative in there. Kind of taking away like the stigma of it all, the whole thing. I yeah. think we, uh, we both have been very lucky with our coming out stories, but then you kind of feel like you're too privileged. Like you, it's not, it's kind of a guilt thing. Like I feel like I've been, I've had it too easy. There's so many people still struggling so much, but like you say, it's actually true. Like it's important to say to tell the happy stories as well because maybe that will take away some of the pressure. Because when I told my friends, I was 16 when I came out, come out, so I was quite young, and I told my friends, and I was like crying my ass out. I was mm. so sad when I told them, and they were like, "Like that? Why the hell are you crying yeah. for?" Yeah. Even my granddad, when I told him he was 92 years old, I told him I was. Together with Magda, he thought he was, she was just my best friend for like five years. <laughs> <laughs> and then he found out we were a couple and he was just like, yeah, I mean, as long as she's happy. And for me, that old guy, 90, 92 years old, he can say that. He, like where he grew up, how he grew up, being gay wouldn't be, uh, I think that would, it was illegal at that time. So yeah. I remember that point made me, it made me so happy and so relieved and I was like, okay, it's just the fact that you can be yourself even for your old granddad that that was just like kind of happiness for me that time. Do you have any like advice to any sport fan who's watching this who yeah want to to be themselves who want to be true to themselves what is what is important? I think I will start with what I think is the problem which is non-gay people or um, you know, non LGBTQ, because we're not discriminating against ourselves. <laughs> we're not making it harder for ourselves. I think we're desperately trying to just live our lives in the best way that we can. So I think to everyone, you know, if it's in a sporting culture, if you're a fan, if you're in the stadium, like you have a responsibility to think about what you're saying and ensure that you're creating environment, you know, around yourself or with your friends or with your family or whatever, that is welcoming and opening um, and open and allows for people to feel safe. You know, I think we get this question all the time, like, why aren't there, why aren't there, well, I was going to say more, but basically why aren't there any out male athletes in the elite sport? Well, it's not safe. They don't feel safe. They either feel like they're going to be abused from fans. Um, they're going to be kicked off teams, they're going to be, uh, you know, have uh, slurs thrown at them, whatever it is. So it's, it's not, it's not safe. And until it is safe, we won't see any male players. I think it's safer on the women's side. And I think we have a lot of camaraderie just between ourselves and a lot more people coming out, which makes it easier for everyone. But I would say, you know, from 
the sporting directors, to the club owners, to the fans, to all the players, like it's your responsibility also. And then for people who are, you know, closeted or struggling um, or just, you know, trying to figure out who they are, I think, you know, seeking out community and seeking out um, other people, whether it's online or at school um, or your friends or whatever, I think it's really, really important to be able to talk to people. I think oftentimes when you're struggling or trying to figure it out, it can feel like you're the only one going through what you're going through. And when you talk about it, people are like, oh yeah, my mom said that too. Or, oh yeah, I had that feeling too. Or, oh yeah, it took me a little bit or I struggled or I didn't. And you, you get this sense that obviously you're, you're not alone, but you get the sense that you're normal because you are normal. Like whatever it is that you are, that's exactly what you're supposed to be. So I think seeking out that community and making sure that you have people around you who not just like accept you, but celebrate you for who you are. Like, you don't want to just be like, okay, fine. Like you're gay and we know we're not going to like kick you out. Like you want people to celebrate that and allow you to live your full life and be able to, to be happy. I think like we all have parts of ourselves, sexuality aside that are just different, that are quirks, like the type of music or your hobbies or the way you dress or the kind of humor that you have, or like you put, I don't know, like your shoes on a certain way. Like we all have just have these little things that I think when we allow ourselves to be full people become these really beautiful things that are all different and we can appreciate about other people. And that's, what's amazing about being a human being is like, you know, that there's only one of you and you know that there's only one of everyone else. So kind of, you know, allowing that space for other people, but also, um, you know, knowing that yourself and um, finding that community that can really support you and, uh, you know, love you and, and provide that sp safe space. So we can all just do what we really wanna do, which is just like enjoy life and be happy and be healthy and, you know, do what we wanna do. You're speaking out on the biggest stage like you, you are activists and something that I really am inspired by is that you are always one of those who goes in front. You're leading the way. Like an example is with the kneeling that I think you were the first white person to do that. Now we are all doing it, but the fact that you, you had the, you're brave enough to do it as the, f the first one. Um, what is the process behind that? Like, it was kind of, to be honest, not something I put a, a ton of thought in because it just seemed really easy and like really something that like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to support, but I know that I believe what Colin is saying. I don't know all the answers, but I think that like what he was saying was so clear and he just articulated in such a, an easy way to understand. I just supported him. And I think I felt at the time, like I've been in a position with you know, marriage equality and, and gay marriage and just in general gay rights to ask for allies and to ask other people to believe me and to believe what I'm saying and to respect me as a full human being. Not to compare the two, because I, I think just racism is so much worse, but, um, you know, I feel like I had, I could understand what that position was like. And I just thought like, well, I, I have some sort of platform. I don't, I don't really, I don't really know. Um, I didn't think it was going to be necessarily as big as it as it was, which I think was part of the uh, me being a little bit naive. But I think, you know, still to this day, it's, it, it was a really kind of easy thing for me to do because I believed him. And it's like I can see that we have these issues in our country and you don't have to have all the answers right away. Um, and I think I just led with my heart and, and sort of led with my mind on that. And that's kind of what what guided me there. Um, obviously there was a lot of fallout from it, but you know, I think even just in the four short years after, you know, Colin kneeling for the first time, look how far we've come and everyone's been proven wrong. You know, everyone who had something to say to Colin and um, something to say to people who supported him or didn't want it to happen, um, you know, a lot of people are on on board now so not to say like oh they were wrong and i was right that's not really it but um you know sometimes i think that you know history kind of catches up quickly and i think the more people that get involved and the more 
you know, people speak out on behalf of what's right, the quicker we can get to things instead of sort of, you know, laboring through years and years and years of discrimination and, and racism and all the things. Like the fact that you were the first one to do it and you you speak a lot about allyship. And I think for me, it may make so much sense and it's so important, but it's also like the fact that you're showing you're an ally creates more allyship. So it's, it's gonna be a positive circle, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And I think as well with the kneeling, the speech you had at the FIFA Awards, something me and Penile we watched it together and our jaws dropped literally yeah. like to speak out on the biggest stage like you could easily just go up there thank your mom and dad and and like your teammates and just walk off but the fact that you took that time to make that important speech to to talk about allyship the way you did yeah. um, was yep. that a, was that a, like also one of those like yes I'm gonna do it or was that something you debated in your mind before? Oh no, I came guns blazing for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I feel like I also take the approach of like, you know, especially in a, in a room like that, like in FIFA, right? Like you kind of don't really want me here anyways. And you like had to give me the award. And it's like, I had a good year, of course, but I think it was on field, off field, a combination of both, but it's kind of like, you know, the world wasn't really designed for me anyways. So the more I try to like squeeze myself into a really small space to be able to like fit in, it's, it, that's just really difficult and knowing I could never really fit in, you know? And I think even just being a female athlete or being a female soccer player or being a woman, like not even the gay part, it's just like, it wasn't really made for me anyway. So it's like, I might as well just say what, I mean, I don't know when I'll be back in that room. Probably never, but, you know, I'm like, whatever. I'm just going to say it. I, I, I think like, you know, sort of going back to kneeling and then kind of four years later, I feel like I saw in other people a little bit of regret, like people who really wanted to say something and didn't. And I think I gained a lot of confidence from that, from kneeling of just knowing that like when you do the right thing, it's not easy and it's it can be wild and hard and people say things and it's crazy, but you never regret it. And I think a lot of people, you know, four years later, especially in 2020, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter movement, really a revolution all over the world. I think people being so involved, it wasn't just like they thought about it for the first time ever. It's that they've been, thinking about it the whole time and either scared to say something or they regret not saying something. And so I feel like for me, I don't know exactly why I feel comfortable, you know, saying things or, or doing things. I have a really strong, you know, support system and family, and maybe I'm just kind of wild, but I feel like I try to always take those opportunities as a way to show people like it's okay. You know, some people might be mad at you, but it's like, they're probably already mad at you, you know, or some people might not accept you or say something, but like, they're probably already feeling that way about you. So how can I own my own narrative and own what I'm saying? And I always look at it like, I'm never speaking to those people in the room. Like I'm not, you know, when I say those things, like I'm not really speaking to the people like a Gianni Infantino. Like, I'm not really saying that to him. I'm saying it to everyone else who's affected by those negative policies. Like we can, if we all stand up, we're more than FIFA. We're more than one person. We're more than, uh, you know, racism or whatever it is. So I, I always kind of look to those opportunities as like speaking to, you know, my people or speaking to people that have experienced, you know, discrimination, like I have your back. Um, I think that that's really powerful. I think sometimes, and I've definitely experienced this, you know, especially since 2019, it's like you work so hard to like get into that room or to be successful or to make that kind of money or have that kind of sponsorship. And I think sometimes it gets hard to sort of balance both. You're like, well, are they going to be mad about this? Are they going to be mad about this? So I, which is impossible. You can't really do that. So I'm just like, if you sign with me, you know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> you made that choice. <laughs> That's also about this with your integrity. I think you make all this sound yeah. so easy, like going yeah, up on the stage not, to a FIFA award, easy. making this speech, like 
I have been on a stage in Denmark winning the Danish Player of the Year, and I remember I was nervous just going up there and standing in front of a, a huge crowd and saying, thank you, mom and dad, <laughs> and all this. Like, yeah. I can just imagine going up there and like having to say all these things in the right way that you do. It's, it, it can't be that easy and it's, yeah, it's just, I think it's really impressive. That's, I think that's why you are so inspiring for so many people that, that you can do this. I want to make sure that when I am speaking about something, I've, I've taken care to do it in the right way because I know that my words matter a lot. I know I need to say things in the right way. I put a lot of work and effort into being ready um, and being educated on things so that, you know, even if it's not a big speech or something, I'm ready to talk about it. Um, and I'm ready, uh, you know, to have kind of the right thing or, you know, enough of the right things to say, but definitely in like a big room like that, I'm like, okay, like they probably don't want to hear it, but they're probably kind of expecting to hear it a little bit and they kind of need to hear it, I think. Um, and I think it, I think it does go back kind of what, what I was saying, like, you know, I'm already a female athlete. I'm already gay. Like I'm already kind of all the things like, it's not going to come as a big surprise, but I feel like I'd be letting myself down if I didn't say those things. Um, and they invited me. I feel like I'm like, you guys invited me. This is, I'm going to come in here and say, I, I actually don't care that much what, you know, those people think I care, you know, like you said about like the kid who's 13, who is crying themselves to sleep every night. Like it, it sounds dramatic, but that's really what I think about. Or I think about, you know, how long I've played and how little money I've been able to make from playing soccer at the level that I've been able to play and think how hard we have to work on and off the field and think about, you know, you guys and think about other athletes and think about, um, all of the other things. So I, I, I think I kind of like do a mind trick on myself where it's like, you know, I'm part of the group that's fighting for more. And so that's who I have to answer to. And so that's the only thing that I really worry about. And that's kind of where I put my focus is like, if this group, th you know, if I'm taking care and being responsible with my words and this group, and, and, you know, sometimes I speak for other groups or, um, you know, just have a message. Like I want to make sure that it's okay with them. And then like for all the other people, I'm like, well, you want things to say exactly the same. So that's not really my focus. My focus is to use whatever platform I have to make the most impact. And I think, you know, being in, in women's soccer for as long as I have, but you know, particularly the last five or six years, as all of our voices has become, have become so much louder, as we've all kind of banded together if not like formally but sort of informally like i feel like i have a connection to you two like specifically just because i know what struggle you're going through we're both female athletes like we're both going to the world cup like i just like i just like get that you know i have like a camaraderie with you that i you know that i that i want to make sure that i kind of take care of so i always kind of think about it from that perspective but yeah i'm sweating and i'm nervous and I'm like, ah, I hope it goes well. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also, it's, that's also a little bit what activism is about. Like, even though you're nervous, even though it's, it's uncomfortable, it's absolutely not in your comfort zone. It's <laughs> out of your comfort yeah. zone. But doing yeah. this is activism that you take this fight for so many people. Yeah. Thank you so much for this, Megan. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. No. We both learned a lot and I yeah. think, yeah, a lot of people will appreciate this and hearing you speak is always yeah you have a lot of wise words to tell and i think yeah a lot of people will learn from this thank you yeah thank you thank you guys so much for for reaching out always want to help out the homies and make sure that we're, we're doing all the things together i feel like we're like oddly in all of this together the future is bright yeah <laughs>